I think now is the best time to create a, a digital product, get it out into the market. And what we're seeing, or what, you know, especially what I'm seeing, is that we're still in early adopters in the digital, you know, course space because it's still more of the risk takers that are coming in and they're building a digital product and they're like, hey, this may one day be a primary source of income, but right now I kind of just want it as a supplementary source of income. And if it works, cool. If it doesn't, it's low risk, right? High reward. And that's going to end very soon, right? They're saying right now that the instructional design space is a $300 billion market globally, annually, and they're saying it's going to hit a trillion in the next five years. Welcome back to The Medicine Podcast. My name is Mimi, and you all know who I'm sitting next to, my love. Go what on. is going on, everybody? <laughs> Welcome back to The Medicine Podcast. We have the honor today to have not only just a special conversation that is a little bit unique to the medicine, um, but a really special guest, someone that we get the pleasure to travel all the way to Italy with here in, in another yes. month or two. Yeah, uh, None fast. other than Mike Gonzalez. Welcome to the podcast. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Yeah, I can't wait for Italy. Super stoked for that. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, when we found out yeah. you were going, we're like, oh, awesome, because you know, you're just a guy that you know seems like it. We could be friends with easily. We've never met in person, but um, we've we've shared you and I many Zoom calls um, many over the last uh, year and a half or year or so with our mutual friend Nathan, and uh, we've had we've had the chance to get to know you a little bit and obviously get to know your business. And I'm really excited to share some of your insights and wisdom with us, but also our listeners today. Yeah. And, you know, my wife and I are going for the first time to Italy. So it's really awesome to know that you're going to be there with really awesome people. So mm -hmm. that always makes the experience much better, in my opinion. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Well, excited to get to know you a little bit more today and, and probably a good just question to kick everything off with. Give everybody some context. What do you do in the world today? And why have you chosen to do this work? Yeah. So um, I run a company called Freedom Builders, and we build, launch, and scale online platforms and businesses for coaches, creators, and educators. And we're really blessed to work with a lot of really awesome people. And really, you know, what lights me up about the business is, you know, I'm a firm believer that everyone comes to this planet with a song to sing, right? Mm -hmm. There's a song inside all of us, right? And as long as we're aligned to our path, then that song is able to come out and, and interact with the world. And what's really cool is in Freedom Builders, what we get to do is we get to build the stage for these coaches, these creators, and these geniuses that we work with to be able to share their song with the world. Because in my opinion, one of the most tragic things that could happen ever is that we leave this life without sharing our song, mm -hmm. right? And that happens to so many people, right? How many people like just die and 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 then they never get the experience to really like, you know, share their dream and, and, and share that song with the world. So, um, you know, we try our best to make it as as easy and and also uh, make sure that it aligns with the vision so that they can really get that song out and, and impact the world that way. I love that. Yeah. And uh, seems to be as relevant as ever. Can you let me know why coaches, why educators, and then why ultimately course creation? What was it for you that sparked that level of interest? Well, it's where I started. I mean, it's my own story. Um, you know, I think a lot of us are usually our first clients, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, being able to be in the trenches um, that a lot of these coaches and these creators are currently in, you know, to, to be in those trenches myself in the past allows me to really support them in a very intimate way because I understand what those trenches smell like, taste like, look like, feel like, you know, but more importantly, like I have a, a path out of them, right? Um, I'm not saying it is the path, but it is a path out of those trenches. And I'm a firm believer, like to be a coach, you don't have to be a master. You just have to be further down the road than someone. Right. And a lot of times when we have this, like, I have to know everything, it has to be perfect. And I have to be a, a master in this field mentality. We don't ever get the opportunity to really share our craft uh, with, you know, the people out there. And if you don't do that, then you're never able to impact them or help them. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, a you know, big believer that as long as you're a little bit further down the road than them and you can turn around and grab them by the hand and be like, yo, let's go this way. Because if you go that way, you're about mm -hmm. to hit a $10,000 mistake. Yeah. But if you go that way, you're about to hit bankruptcy, right? It's, it's like, no, let's stay on this path. And by staying on this path, we will get out of these trenches together uh, and we'll be able to find success that way. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pr- beautifully put. And, and everybody listening, Mike is the master behind so many of the great medicine podcast guests, actually, and their course creations. You've heard from Jason Picard multiple times on this show. Uh, I was had the honor of being in his Abundance Archetype course created by Mike and the Freedom Builders crew alongside Jason, which has just been incredible. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ryan Sprague. Ryan Sprague with his uh, cannabis coaching um, and community. Mm-hmm. Um, I know friends like Troy Casey as well. Uh, you've been instrumental in his just brand overhaul at large, um, not to mention some of the other you know specific pieces of uh, content and course creation. Um, and then of course with, with Mimi and Nathan in the development of the, uh, clear and free course. So really a, a master mm-hmm. behind so much of this work, you know, what do you see as the future of e-learnings as courses? And is there another maybe notable industry genre domain that you are also facilitating outside of the health, wellness, mindfulness space that uh, the names that I've just mentioned are associated with? Yeah, man, great question and really relevant. Like right now, we are in the golden age of entrepreneurship, in my opinion, where someone can literally build a six or seven figure business for less than $40,000 in startup costs and less than $500 a month in overhead. Let's just pause for a second and just like wrap yeah. those numbers around our brain, right? Like yeah. try go back to the nineties and telling someone, Hey, you can have a six or seven figure business for these, st- these kind of costs. They would, th- mine would be blown, right? How they were taking out what quarter million dollar loans back then. Just right. And, and then start even, a business? even early two thousands, like even yeah. early, early web 2.0, it's hire as fast as you can. You need like 10 people to build a website. Yeah. Uh, And it's like revenue and users. Who cares if we're losing money? We can't lose too much, but it's like lose money, raise money, lose money, raise money, lose money, raise money, and hope Mm -hmm. someday that someone buys my business. And it was that brutal even like 15 years ago. And think about the opportunity now. I mean, you can build a product that can penetrate a global market and you can generate revenue at a very cost-effective way, right? So, you know, there was the talk of recession, you know, uh, what, a year and a half ago? I don't know. I don't really pay attention, but I don't know if it's still being talked about. But how do you survive a recession? You penetrate new markets in a cost-effective way. There's no bigger market than the global market, and there's no more cost-effective way than building a digital product that you build one time and then you scale, right? And the overhead cost is, is very little on that, um, especially if you're a solopreneur or a creator or a coach, right? It's really just, at the end of the day, your time that that you're putting in. And of course, time is money, and it's very important. It's a huge resource that we have. But at the end of the day, like, from a monetary standpoint, the overhead is 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 very low. So I think now is the best time to create a, a digital product, get it out into the market. And what we're seeing, or what you know, especially what I'm seeing is that we're still in early adopters. We're still in early adopters in the digital, you know, course um uh space because it's still more of the risk takers that are coming in and they're building a digital product and they're like, hey, this may one day be a primary source of income. But right now I kind of just want it as a supplementary source of income. And if it works, cool. If it doesn't, you know, it's, you know, it's low risk, right? High reward. And that's going to end very soon, right? They're saying right now that the instructional design space is a $300 billion market globally, annually. And they're saying it's going to hit a trillion in the next five years. Mm. That's a 700 billion with a B dollar swing in five years. What do you think is driving that? um, The desire to to get out of a traditional kind of brick and mortar nine to five punch in, punch out, punch out, you know, type of you know, system that, that we've created. I mean, that of course is my opinion, but well, I, mean, I, think I, can't, I can't help but think of the deterioration of mainstream academia and education. Yeah. As well. I'm thinking from the, from the client or consumer or customer side, what's driving that to fuel the fire for the demand of a market that big. Yep. And I mean, you said it beautifully. I mean, that's where, uh, where I was going next. I think we're going more into decentralized education. Uh, I think we're going more into learning from the source versus learning from the middleman and really seeing like how, you know, these colleges are just big businesses. I mean, they're just yeah. monster businesses and getting more and more and more expensive, you know, every year. And then also on top of that, like you are buried in student loans that you can never get out of like yeah. some people. Yeah. So, you know, imagine learning physics straight from Einstein versus like having to pay someone hundreds of thousands of dollars to learn you know, physics, right? So I think we're going more to of like an apprenticeship model 
where you're learning f- directly from a mentor and then you take that knowledge and then you can spread that knowledge um, throughout the world and you get stamped with their approval and now you get to assume their authority, right? And that's huge. That's why people go to college. It's like, I have a stamp that says Harvard. That means, you know, I went through a certain process that allows me to ask for this much money because now I have Harvard's authority assumed onto me. Mm -hmm. But I think it's going to go into more of that individualized, more mentorship apprenticeship model where you can also stamp that uh, authority uh, onto your process, your educational process. In this little cup, I have my favorite way to enjoy mushy love, which is in combination with cold milk. We drink raw cow's milk and I put it uh, about eight ounces of milk in with about a scoop and a half of mushy love. That combination, like the cold version of mushy love, tastes like liquid graham crackers. Like I shit you not. If you don't know yet what mushy love is, it's our mushroom elixir with 500 milligrams of chaga which is amazing for gut support they call it the king of mushrooms and then 500 milligrams as well of tremella mushroom which is the beauty mushroom and she is most known for holding 500 times her weight in water the more hydrated we are the more plump and dewy and fresh and young our skin looks Mm, plump and dewy (laughs) For Mushy Love, go to getmushylove.com and you can use the code MEDICINE for a nice little discount that we only give to our Medicine Podcast listeners. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, what do you see as far as, um, as far as the people who are saying yes to this type of learning? What do you see for, in the form of, educational courses. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you see any trends uh, of the people who are saying yes to this? Like I, you know, sometimes I think that we're sort of in a bubble, like a podcasting bubble because we and everyone we know and are friends with also listen to podcasts. But then when you look at like charts or statistics, there's still like 40% of the population that has never listened to a podcast. And so it blows my mind. I'm like, what? So Mm -hmm. I know that I'm in a bubble of sorts and we all are to some degree, depending on what the thing is. But as far as like the, the people who are saying yes to courses, like who are they? Yeah. And that's, um, and this also addresses, you know, your question, Chase, but like that, um, is what we're seeing now. And that's what's telling me that we're moving from early adopters into early majority, is that we're seeing more of early majority type industries coming in and being more curious about what's possible for them with a digital product, right? So we're seeing more, you know, bankers and insurance companies and, you know, mainstream doctors and like, you know, people that are just out there in that kind of traditional model coming in and now saying like, hey, that person is doing really well with this thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, how did they do that, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, we're actually building for an insurance company right now who uh, essentially just wants to extend their reach, right? They have uh, 10 different branches across the state. And in, in their in their training system, they were literally driving from branch to branch to branch, right? Like, you know, spending money driving physically themselves to each branch to train. And I'm like, hey, why don't you just put your training system into a, a digital platform and then send that out to the people that, you know, you want to, uh, to train and develop. And then you can do touch points instead of having to be there, you know, as often as you are. Mm-hmm. So now they're like, Oh, that's pretty cool. And they are now building, a, you know, a training system. But then also the actual owner of the insurance company is building his own digital product on the side that he wants to sell that, you know, encapsulates his IP and his educational material on teaching people how to do what? build insurance companies. Mm -hmm. So now if you're an aspiring person or entrepreneur that wants to get into the insurance space, but you have no idea what you're doing, you can learn from someone who is almost a nine figure earner in the insurance space. It's like, you know, imagine learning step by step directly from them. Like it's just follow this blueprint and you'll avoid tens of thousands of dollars worth of mistakes that I learned the hard way. Mm. That's really, really fascinating. Yeah. Are there currently, and this is just my own uh, you know, ignorant question because the first thing that comes up to me is like, all right, where's the catalog of e-learnings and courses? Where's the place that I can go to type in? How do I start an insurance company? Which does not sound interesting to me, but let's say something <laughs> uh, maybe a little more interesting, like how w- 
say we buy an actual brick and mortar home someday and we've got some, you know, short, like handyman 101. I, yeah. I could go ask my father or fly him down and, you know, probably have him show me a few things that he probably should have showed me when I was a kid. Um, but <laughs> nonetheless, maybe he could show me now. However, maybe I could find it and I would go to YouTube now and yeah. look for such mm-hmm. things. And there are, there are enough of those out there that would be helpful. There's also a lot of trash, but where currently would there be like, or, and maybe this is still white space, a catalog of mm-hmm. what's available. You know, you got the skill shares of the world that mm-hmm. are, you know, you might get learning from like, uh, uh, you know, what's the famous guy from like the nineties, the guy named Bob, he did like the house building, uh, Bob the villa or something. Oh, anyway. Yeah, the happy little trees guy. Yeah. Um, anyway, let's say you could take a course from Tim Allen on how to improve like your your home, right? Oh, um, got you. And you can find something like that on Skillshare where you're learning from a celebrity, but half the time, you know, those folks actually really don't know the the skill. But yeah. where is the catalog if someone was to say, I want to go learn XYZ and I don't want to necessarily go to YouTube? How do I find this? It doesn't exist in the way that you're describing it yet yeah but i'm working on it (laughs) cool uh well great idea that's been a bit well dude that's been a vision of mine for like the last i'd say two and a half to three years and you know this is something that just came back into form because you guys know and lifted right mark and kimberly all right cool so we have a a collaborative program with them called business breakthrough university right it's our done with you program it's a little different than our done for you so Mark comes in and he does the mindset portion of, of that program, but they reinvented the Enlifted tech to be specific to business challenges. So it's like imposter syndrome that comes in specifically of building a business or money stories that come in specifically to sales or you know business related, things like that, right? And then we come in and we do what we call the reels, right? So Enlifted is the feels and we're the, we're the reels. And then we give them all of the business building tools within that program. Um, but Kimberly and I were just talking about this idea of creating this YouTube style platform where you can just come in and just type in something that you're looking for and then really be able to interact with that educational material and get the result that you're looking for. Um, And it was crazy because she had brought it up just out of the blue. And um, I had been talking, I've been talking about for years wanting to create that. Um, So anyway, to answer your question, coming soon. Love that. Love that. Okay. I, I'm going to have a million questions for you to say. This is so fun for me. Let's go. What do you say to the person, myself included, who says, thank you. I don't need another coach right now. And I don't need another course. I've taken many. And in mm-hmm. fact, in this last year, I've said to myself, because it's very tempting, no more courses, Chase. And it, I've had to say no to people that I love. J- uh, I took Jason's course last year, which was kind of the the cap on a good five to seven year run on taking a lot of courses. Mm -hmm. And I had to say no to his brother, Jared. I've said no to a couple others in our space um, because I really feel like I need a breath to integrate some of my learnings. And I get the pseudo feeling of progress, learning and growth by continuing to take the courses, take the notes, do the homework, go to the group calls, use my voice, but I'm never embodying it. It's not like setting into my actual, you know, nervous system and physicality. And so this year I was like, man, I need to just to like stretch this out a little bit so that I can integrate. What would you say to those folks or even just folks who are maybe a little more snarky and less thought out about, no, thanks. I I get bombarded with, you know, coaching uh, sales gimmicks or calls on Instagram all the time. And I'm just a little bit fatigued. Yeah, I'd say, what are you looking for then, right? There's there's really, there's two types of consumers, right? They're the people that love to consume education just to consume education. And then there's the people that love to consume education and apply the education, right? So if you're the consumer who has a certain result or goal in mind, and you're looking for an educational process that can, where you can essentially, you know, pay for speed, right? You can take someone else's and, and model you know, what they did so that you can create that result faster and more efficiently, then I would say getting into a course so you can make that happen could be super beneficial, right? But if you're someone that really just kind of just like doesn't really know what they want to do, doesn't have a goal in mind, it's it's basically like, you know, if you told um, if you told Mimi, it's like, hey, Mimi, we're going to we're going to go out to eat. And then you like got in your car and you guys just like just had no clue where you wanted to eat you guys would be driving around forever because it's just like no destination in mind. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you just be driving around spending gas and 
you know, because you have no destination. So first we get to discover what is the end goal here? Like, what do I want to create in my life? What is the vision for my life? And once you get that dialed in, then it's basically like, go find someone who has created the same exact vision that I want to create and let me go learn from them. Mm -hmm. That's what I did at the beginning, right? So, you know, a little bit about my background and my story. Like I started from, well, <laughs> I started in corporate restaurants and then I moved into the fitness space, mm. but I didn't really know what I was doing. Like I just had a passion for working out. So what I did is I went to one of the best trainers in our area and I said, Hey, would it be cool if I paid you money to follow you around for like a year and a half? Would you be okay with that? She's like, just follow me around. You're like, you're just going to pay me to follow me around. And I'm like, yeah, I just want to learn what you're doing. I wow. want to like soak in every part of your technique and your process so that I can be good at what you do because I have a passion for being a fitness trainer. She's like, uh, yeah, I guess that's fine. <laughs> just don't get in my way, bro. And I'm like, okay, cool. Sounds good. Deal. And I followed her around for a year and a half. Wow. And after that year and a half, I was very proficient in the skill set of training, particularly females because she had more of a female clientele. And guess what I did? I went and I became one of the uh, trainers in that gym that specialized in helping women lose up to 30 pounds, right? Mm. And did really well with that. And then eventually, obviously, got into the online space and, and turned that into an online course. And that's a whole different <laughs> journey and story. Um, there's a big difference between brick and mortar and online, just so you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so that was one of the things I did. But the reason I was able to do this because I knew what my goal was. I knew what my vision was, right? So I just, you know, wasn't just there to 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 be entertained or educated for no reason. Does that answer your question? It does. Yeah, I know beautifully and actually dovetails really nicely into what I would say next or what I would ask next is for hands-on learners or for those who thrive from the mere neuron exchange of the physical presence of being around a mentor. Um, mm -hmm. or in an apprentice type role physically, how can on the online course world not leave those behind? That's my biggest complaint about college academia was that I had to sit in class and stare at the lecturer or the professor and I never felt anything. I never actually embodied anything until mm -hmm. I got out into the working world. And obviously through, I was fortunate enough to have an internship through college and kind of kicked off my finance and accounting acumen um, but it was like my two years as a as an intern in college would like tripled my learning from sitting in a classroom and listening to someone yeah. lecture regardless of the fact that they may have worked at goldman sachs and had an investment banking background right so I, yeah. what would you say to the person who is that sort of hands-on learner the person who thrives under sort of face-to-face -face apprenticeship yeah i'm a big believer of building into your curriculum a lot of application pieces right and those application pieces and really the way and mimi you know this the, the way that i always you know recommend building a course curriculum is you start with an introductory piece who are these people and why should i listen to them right like edify yourself talk, talk about your story talk about the mission and the why behind the program why you built it and also what the people going through the program can expect once they're done going through the full curriculum what's the transformation going to look like like that's going to excite them, right? But then right after that, you got to go and you got to start breaking beliefs. You have to, because people are going to come in with a belief system that is typically limiting them or else they wouldn't be there, right? They'd be fine. So you have to start kind of dismantling or breaking apart that belief system. Then after that, you have this beautiful garden that you just pull all these weeds out of and you get to start planting your philosophy, right? What is your new belief system, which you believe is more empowering than disempowering and start planting or, or inserting that into the process. And then after that, you leave them with the tactics. But then all throughout, there's education, application. So it's not enough. And I think a lot of the big platforms out there are just like missing this step, right? Mm -hmm. It's not enough to just throw videos at people. <laughs> it's like, here you go, watch the videos. Right. Good luck. Like you can't, you just can't do that anymore, right? Especially now because people are going to be craving human interaction. Mm -hmm. People are going to be, you know, people are going to be salivating for community. Like you have to fold in a community piece into the process, especially as AI starts to ramp up and we can go off on that if you want. But um, especially as that starts to happen, you have to now insert more human connection into your process because as AI gets bigger and stronger, human connection is going to be a scarce commodity. And what do we know about scarce commodities? You can charge more for them and they're going to be sought out. They're going to be in demand by the consumer, by the market, right? So the more that you can insert that into your process, the more your course is going to stand apart. You're going to differentiate yourself from all these fast food AI courses that are going to come onto the market very soon here because anyone's just going to be able to 
produce a course in yep. five minutes using AI. But let me ask you this. Can you tell the difference between something that your grandma cooked for you or something that you got at McDonald's? Like, can you tell the difference? I'd say yes, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's love put into the thing that grandma cooked for you. There's a heartbeat put mm -hmm. into the thing that grandma cooked for you. Guess what AI doesn't have, guys? Mm -hmm. a, a heartbeat. Yeah. So that is what's going to be our competitive edge in this space between AI and things that are built by hand by humans is the heartbeat and the love that gets put into it. I love that. You know, it, what it makes me think of is like uh, in this world of just the, the human body even just continuing to get more and more fake in, in all of the various modalities that the human body can adjust into, uh, you know, aesthetic changes, for lack of a better oh, yeah. term, plastic surgery. Mimi becomes more beautiful to me every day for a million reasons, but for one reason very clearly in that she's completely human. <laughs> like she is full human beauty and there is i have no problem with like i'm likely going to be doing you know stem cells and platelet rich plasma replacements and if i start losing my hair i'll be i've already done some you know platelet rich plasma on my hairline i'm all on board for these types of modalities for supporting health longevity vitality but then there's we all know like hunger games level uh you know human bodies that that walk around where you're like man i don't know what is going on but there's been a lot done and there's there's a beauty that like stands out from somebody who is just like so pure if you will not to sound like uh you know neoplatonistic or whatever yeah um yeah. but natty baby it's like it's almost <laughs> as if those become more of a of a of a uniqueness to yeah. yes. to beauty and uh yeah i can't help but think that like maybe love handles actually become the sexually appetizing thing <laughs> in like five years from now because it is the indication that someone is authentically yeah. representing their own yeah. you know, innate beauty. Well, dude, you nailed it. Yeah. I mean, th yeah. think about the energetic recognition of that. Like when we come across something that's plastic, we can feel it energetically, right? Like when you come across some a, a human who has done millions of dollars worth of work or whatever, maybe it's not the best work, you kind of get this like weird, like, whoa, there's something off there, right? right. Like yeah. energetically. Well, think about that with your courses, right? Mm -hmm. When you put love and you put attention and intention into these courses that you're building, imagine how you're going to show up on a sales call. Mm-hmm. Are you going to show up more authentic, more passionate, right? More inspired on a sales call with something that you built brick by brick over six or eight months or something that you'll like, you know, one of these robots wrote in five minutes, right? You're going to show up more passionately. And guess what? That energetic exchange is what's going to be translated on that sales call. And the person on the other end is going to feel it. Therefore, they're going to believe it. And that's what a sales call is. It's a dance of beliefs. Either their limiting belief wins or the belief in your product to get them the result that they're looking for wins. Someone's going to win on that sales call, right? And it's going to be the person with the strongest belief. And they don't have to believe in what you're saying. They just have to believe that you believe in what mm -hmm. you're saying, mm -hmm. right? And that energetic exchange is going to show up when you built the thing with passion and with heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. And when you not just passion and heart, but when you do pair it with some level of expertise, um, totally. you know, I, I think that it's really a marrying of two worlds that is uh, really wonderful that your team helps people bring to life, um, you know, and, and just speaking from experience, it's like um, you've done this enough times that when Nathan and I were working with you guys, where it's like, it's almost like you saw in us saw in me like things that needed to be like extracted a little bit because you've done this process so many times and and uh, i was really grateful for your guys' support and guidance through this whole process of like getting this thing created that the world needed so badly and mm. i you know just speaking you know just a, a a testimonial of sorts to to your work and your guidance and everything and support through the process um, I had tried on my own a, a few years prior to create an HPV course. And I just had, I had no idea what I was doing. Like I had the passion, I had the heart, but I just had no idea where to start, what to do, how to market myself. And, and it's, it's not even like marketing. Like I, I hate that term. It rubs me in a way because in my heart and in my mind, I'm not just like after people's 
money. Like I'm, I'm searching for the person that is desperate for the answers that I think that I can help provide. And so whatever, if that's marketing, I guess call it marketing. But I didn't know how to do that or where to start or how to make it really shine in a professional way um, to highlight the the authenticity and highlight the the um, the end result, you know. And uh, your team just beautifully helps helps the person do that. And uh, I was really really grateful for that because it was like <laughs> you know your limits as a creator or as a, a person, and and that's you know, where you guys came in was like filling in all the gaps of like where I'm completely limited. Yeah. When we're in the bottle, it's hard to see like what the label is. Right. So, you know, when we get to, what we get to do is we get to look from an outside in perspective, right? Because a lot of the geniuses that we work with, they're like really smart and really passionate and really driven individuals who truly want to help the world. And we won't, I mean, we just won't take clients on that aren't that, right? Mm-hmm. Because yeah, cool. I just, wow. I just won't, yeah. I just won't do it. Um, yeah. I, there's plenty of people I said, you know, no, it's just not a good fit or it's not a good, uh, not a good time. Um, because again, energy is really powerful in this thing. And that's, to me, marketing is, 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 is essentially just helping, right? It's like, if you truly want to help people, then you will scream that message from the rooftops, right? Like Mm -hmm. if you had the cure for this incurable disease, just sitting in your pocket, like, and you're seeing people all around you suffering, like you're going to scream that from the rooftops because you know, it can help them, right? That's what marketing is. And when you do it that way, it's very authentic. We just, you know, as consumers have a bad taste in our mouth because there's a lot of people that don't do it that way. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've seen that we've been exposed to that. So we're like, oh, that kind of feels a little sleazy, whatever. But all it is, is you have something that can help them. And in order for you to be able to help more people, you need revenue to do that. Right. Right. So there has to be an exchange because mm-hmm. if you want to help the world, you need revenue to grow your business big enough to be able to do that. And the person who is getting that individual help from you is what, what what's going to allow you to to accumulate that revenue so you can help more people. So mm-hmm. it's 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 this like cycle, right? It's like all of us really helping each other, being connected to each other. Because as I buy your product, then you can grow that product, which means you can help more people. So essentially, I actually helped that person too. Right. Yeah. 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 It's it's definitely just a. Um, a shift in the way that we see the energy of exchange, you know, mm-hmm. um, that it's it's all just energy and we're exchanging money for time, you know, in order to get to an end point or an end goal. And um, yeah, I think that I love that the, the marketing is helping is a really great yeah, way to put it. I love that. Yeah, I'm definitely going to use that um, uh, for future reference. And I want to come back to marketing a little bit because I think it'd be fun for us and, and our audience too to learn from a marketing master on a few of these, a few of the behind the scenes. I don't know about uh, master. But- secrets. I, I do want to get your thoughts, um, since we've talked about it a couple times now briefly, uh, artificial intelligence and the future of AI. Maybe um, we can frame the question along the lines of, what do you see as the proper, um, appropriate, most abundant use of the technology as we progress into the future? And then what is the sort of dark version of that? What if we aren't able to integrate this technology in a way that actually supports uh, you know, abundance and vitality and, and uh, you know, generosity, but rather goes in the opposite direction. How do these two realities potentially play out with AI? Yeah, I mean, it's something we're very familiar with, right? AI is a tool. It's, it's just like any other tool. Like I can use a hammer to build someone a house who's homeless, or I can use a hammer to kill someone, right? It's like, right. it's a tool. So if we're using the tool in the appropriate way, which in my opinion, when it comes to the digital space, it's like to help grow and help supplement um, getting the knowledge out there to the world in a in a bigger way, right? Because AI can move quickly. Um, the thing with AI, in my opinion, is that it, it just still looks inauthentic. So if we can somehow fold in the AI process and then also make sure that the heartbeat is not removed from the process and let the two live kind of, you know, together in a really harmonious way, then I think the, um, you know, the tools that AIs can provide is, is going to be really powerful. Uh, but again, it's just like any other tool, man. It's just like you have to use it with the right intention. So it's all about the intention behind the use of it um but it is going to be able to allow us to reach more people it's like a cell phone right it's like anything right it's like social media right social media can be used for like to literally break people down and destroy people's lives or it can be used to connect with people from across the globe that need your help so it's like really what the intention is behind it and whether you're using it for the light or for the dark yeah yeah Mm -hmm. no perfectly put um and i and i 
I totally resonate with that and completely agree with that. I think that people's intentions are fucked up sometimes and mm -hmm. they're like for the greater good. Um, and, and that's where things actually get shaky is like their intentions are to save the world in a very twisted, manipulated mm -hmm. way. And so we're all, you know, a part of their intention for better or for worse. Um, and I would love to hear from you, you know, we're talking about social media and even just the tech that's available now in the form of AI and others. Um, you know, clearly evident that, that there's massive benefit to this, right? Like we've built a, yeah. a life ourselves through the, these domains and these platforms that we wouldn't have been able to 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. And uh, it's provided so much freedom and autonomy and uh, so much access to information. My God, I'd be so dumb if <laughs> I did not have yeah, podcasts and social media and e-learnings yeah. and courses. I'd still be just crunching yeah. freaking numbers at the firm and just like wishing to God there was a better existence. But remember encyclopedias, man? Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we had to like we're talking flip about through the, the index cards in the library and like, yeah. oh, okay, I, there it is. I think you, you know, go find the book. <laughs> right, we're we're thirty four, and we're we're one of the last generations that uh, like still had to go to the library to do like yeah, school yeah. projects and took notes in class and didn't have our laptops and things. And it's what it's, do they uh, do there now? What's the <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I think school. Any, any one of us walking into a a modern high school, we'd be like, "What is this?" Place? Yeah, yeah. Know. Or classroom Crazy. rather. But it, but but on that note, because there's clearly these sort of like negative side effects as well, and and there's a lot going on right now. I think we're really coming up on the the just beginning stages of awareness as it pertains to the toxicity of some of these technologies. How do you in your life? you know, both personally and professionally, uh, with your kids, with yourself, set a proper, you know, relationship framework for integrating technology into the way that you exist. It's still a dance for me, just to be completely transparent yeah. and honest. I mean, you know, we're in the middle of a, of, of a growing business and our business is primarily done online. I mean, 98% of our business is done online. And in order for me to be online, I have to be in front of screens. I have to be on my computer. I have to be on my phone. I'm very responsive to the clients. Like if yeah. someone reaches yeah. out to me. Yeah, dude, it's on, impressive. Yeah, and you know, there's pros and cons to that, right? There, it's a dance. I'm still trying to figure out like the balance, right? If I'm just being totally transparent with you. Um, and my kids see me on my phone a lot, right? So I have to kind of snap myself out of it and just literally put it down and, you know, really create that space in that boundary and treat it as if I'm navigating through multiple dojos in my life and literally just bow in and bow out of that dojo. And when I'm in that space, this is what I'm doing. When I'm in this space, this is what I'm doing. And it has to be a sacred space. It has to be non-negotiable, right? Um, and that's really what I'm trying, you know, continuing to learn and continuing to dance through. But again, it's a very very powerful tool that can help us do a lot of things um you know and it's what we still need to learn how to integrate into mm -hmm. our lives in a way that doesn't break us down or or or, or suck us dry yeah. yeah yeah i totally feel that i and i can attest to like the your responsiveness because when we were working together you know i would send you a a message on telegram and i see the little dots writing back literally like 45 seconds later and i'm like how is he doing this? Like he, it, it's just like within seconds and um, it was really impressive, but also like I can see on the other side of it, uh, how, you know, with a family and, and kids and everything, how that would be like, it, it could turn into like a rub later on down the road where it's like, uh, I actually need to address this. And, and, um, but yeah, it, it's, it's hard when you, make promises to clients that like, yeah, if you ever need me, I'm there. And you follow through on that. It's like, there's always like pros and cons. Yeah. I mean, you know, just to speak to that, you know, I started in the fine dining space. I was in restaurant management for fine dining for, you know, 20 well, been restaurants for 20 years, fine dining wow. for the, for the, you know, most part. And what allowed me to really find a lot of success in Freedom Builders, and we're word of mouth, by the way. Like, we don't do a lot of advertising. We've done almost 120 build-outs, either in, in progress wow. currently or completed in the last, you know, three years. And it's 98% of it has been word of mouth. Yeah. So the reason that we're able to grow is because, you know, there's a concept in business called chunking laterally. 
Um, and I took a lot of the concepts that I learned in fine dining in restaurants and I brought it into the online space. And the reason that I was able to find so much success is because there's so many people right now in the online space that are promising unicorns and delivering donkeys. They're, they're, they're asking for 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. I've been part of masterminds that are even more than that, where I was just disappointed in the fulfillment of it. Yeah. Right. So it's not enough to just sell someone on your process. You then also have to fulfill at that high level and a lot of people just fall short in my personal opinion in this space in the arena of fulfillment and i set out a goal and i set the intention with my team from the very start it's like we are going to build the best support system in the industry like people are going to feel as if they are our only clients even though we have 28 projects going at the same time and each project has a thousand moving parts so it's yeah. like you know what i'm saying like they are going to feel like that a hundred percent of the time and, you know, I think we've done a really good job of really being able to fulfill on that intention and on that promise that I set out, you know, to to do from the beginning. Um, but that allows us to stand apart. That mm -hmm. allows us to differentiate ourselves. And the space actually made it very easy. <laughs> like, and it's like all the people out there is like, make $100,000 in two weeks or whatever. Oh, my like, God, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, whatever it is, make a million dollars. And it's like you're building a business. Building a business takes time. Yeah, it takes time. We can give you the strategies. We can give you all the the parts. We literally do it for our clients. But at the end of the day, like if you don't insert the time variable into your business, what that causes you to do is to stop talking about your product. Nothing kills a business faster than a creator of that business who doesn't promote the product. Like it will destroy the business because then people are like, oh, I guess I just like don't have that thing anymore. Oh, that sucks. I really wanted to buy it. And what people don't understand about like these promotional periods is that they're always planting seeds. So you see like people like coaches on social media, it's like, you know, one week they're, I don't know, like a gut health coach. And the next week they're like, you know, I don't know, selling, you know, whatever product and then the right. other week they're like doing something else it's like whoa what are these people doing it's hard to position yourself as one thing or as the authority as that one thing if you keep switching back and forth you know because your audience is just going to be confused and the confused buyer says no every single time like every time so you know what we tell our clients is listen promote this thing ride this thing until the wheels fall off because you have no idea the seeds that you're planting during these launches or during these promotional periods that may not bear fruit in that particular launch, but you just keep watering them. You mm -hmm. just got to keep watering them, right? It takes about 90 to 120 days from a lead to go from cold to hot. And if you stop in that process of nurturing, now you got to start back at zero again. Mm -hmm. So you can't build consistent revenue because you're constantly going back to zero, Right. It's like planting a seed and then digging it up a week later and to see if it's grown. It's like, well, it's never going to grow. You know what I mean? So um, <laughs> to answer your question, um, yeah, it's really important to us that we provide really high quality service. Um, but yeah, putting boundaries in place around what that looks like from a personal standpoint is still a dance for me um, yeah. because that's a big promise that I made at the beginning uh, for myself and also for my team and also for my clients. Yeah. Yeah, you guys really nail it. Like in, in observation of you and, and having really some dear friends who worked with you intimately in, in their, you know, creative endeavors and uh just nothing but just amazing feedback. And so huge, huge props to you guys. And and so maybe we can move into some some fun marketing topics since we're already kind of talking about it a little bit as it pertains to, you know, even like launch periods and and um things of that nature. Would love, since you mentioned it, word of mouth marketing. How do you do yeah. word of mouth marketing in 2024? And and we're we're a, a business here that has never spent money on ads. We've never driven traffic to our show. We've never driven traffic to our site or our product pages. It's been all organic. Huge props to this girl over here. Uh, it's been authentic marketing, word of mouth marketing, and uh, you know, thank God we've been successful. Um, but how do you do it? I, sometimes I even scratch my head. Like, man, there's so many podcasts now. If we would try to start now, this would be literally a hundred times harder than it was in 2019. Uh, how do folks do it? What's, what's the, what's the recipe for word of mouth, organic growth? Easy. Deliver the best results possible. That's it. Fulfill your promise. Say you're going to do something and actually fucking do it. Mm. Like that's it. Like that is how you grow a business word of mouth. Um, and then throughout the process, give them that high touch, you know, high caliber experience, right? It's all about the experience. 
and especially like when we build these courses as well. And, you know, Mimi, you and I you know, talked about this right at the beginning. It's like, I don't want to just slap a bunch of videos together here. Like anyone can do that, right? Mm -hmm. That's essentially throwing spaghetti against the wall, right? When you take someone through an experience that takes them through this kind of like cinematic bell curve, like they're coming in, then there's like a peak and then they're like done at the end. It's like they just rode this roller coaster through your course experience. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to ask for more. They're going to be like, yo, what did you just do to me? Not only did you give me the result that you promised you were going to give me, but you took me through a fucking experience getting right. that result. So now it's like, what else you got for me, dude? Right? Right. And that's how you extend the average lifetime value of the customer, right? And that's how you create a really strong backend offer. That's how you scale a business is if you take th someone through an experience that is unforgettable. And what you do is you turn them from a client into a fan. And fans are how you grow word of mouth because fans are mission driven. They will recruit other people to the mission for you because they are fanatical about your mission. Think about sports teams. Think about, you know, uh, movie stars or rock mm -hmm. stars that have these like you know think about the Beatles and it's like they had these like crazy fans right they didn't have to do Facebook ads or whatever yeah. like right. no they, people were just like there's a million people that are going nuts for this band or for this sports team like I'm at least curious to find out what they're doing like they got to be doing something and guess what Curiosity leads to conversations and conversations lead to conversions. Those are the three C's of building a business. Yeah. Well, yeah. I nailed it, man. That's that's so interesting and, and fascinating. From a performance indicator standpoint, you know, maybe more quantifiable data or feedback, what would indicate success and what would indicate, you know, improvement is needed? I think we get obsessed with likes, for instance, on social media, yeah. um, shares and some of these other statistics that maybe, I don't know, arbitrary. What should we be looking for as these, you know, key performance indicators of success and or where can we improve? Yeah. So, I mean, I can speak to the course experience. Um, you know, I've got a, an amazing team that, that really focuses on social media. I mean, you've met Yasmin and she's just awesome at what she does. From a course experience standpoint, like most courses have about a 40% completion rate. That means the person bought your course, they completed about 40% of the, of the course, and then they quit, right? That's the average. So if you can create a really badass experience in a container where there's accountability and there's like-minded people going through the journey and you've got group coaching calls where you're, you know, bouncing off what they just learned. So you're, you're, you're making them really excited to learn what's next. Then you can increase that completion rate to close to a hundred percent. Like you really can. And you can track all that. Like on the back end, we use Kajabi. I think it's the best all in one platform out there. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll say that <laughs> until someone builds someone better. I don't think right. they will, but yeah. Um, you can track on the back end, like the completion rate, like you can literally see how much of the video the person watched, where they stopped, like all the things. So from a data standpoint, if you want to create improvements, you can actually go in and say like, okay, I've sold 30 students in this cohort of my course and seven of them completed a hundred percent. Right. And then the 23 of them quit at whatever percentage you can see where they quit. You'd be like, damn, 10 of them quit in week five? That's weird, right? So you can go to week five and you can be like, what the hell did I do in week five, right? Like maybe you got to like step it up in week five, right? Or maybe it's really when you started falling off as a coach, your energy dropped on the group calls. Your energy dropped in the community that you create. You stopped engaging in the community that you created right around that five-week mark. So what can you do as a coach to really elevate your energy, to get inspired again, to get passionate again about your course and the experience that you're taking your clients through, right? Like maybe you, I don't know, need to go to have like a spa day or something, like whatever it is to reset and then come back into it on fire again so that people continue through the entire process, right? Um, so from a, a data standpoint, like the, that's a really good metrics to, to track. Because if they quit, they don't get the result. If they don't get the result, that looks poorly on your course and on your process. Therefore, they won't tell anyone about it and mm -hmm. your business doesn't grow. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I also wonder if there is something else to the to the phenomena of someone not finishing a course because we've all been there. Um, I, I certainly have. And 
at the beginning, it's super gung ho. You're super excited about it. And you're like all in. Of course, you just dropped hundreds or maybe thousands of dollars on this specific course. You're like, I'm all in. And then life happens where you, you you get busy or you're like, oh, I'll do that tomorrow or I'll get back and do it tomorrow or you now you have a kid or you something changes in your life. And I think that there are definitely outside circumstances that can that can impact someone's like fervor. Um, and so I'm I'm wondering if there's like how do how do you as the as the coach or the the educator inspire people to like continue on even if it's not a reflection of your work necessarily but just like life happening you know yeah. um cuz i've been there too and it's like i have all these like amazing intentions and then i don't know something something drops yeah i mean you know what you're saying is super relevant and what we get to remember is that we're dealing we're not dealing we're supporting mm -hmm. human beings yeah and human beings come with a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. <laughs> they come with a lot of life right and you know you get to really evaluate like hey what could i have done i'm always living at cost i'm always going to say it's on me there's something i could have done there's something i could have looked at you know this is on me to take a look at and see what i can shift that's just kind of my mentality right but at the end of the day like people are going to come with limiting beliefs people mm -hmm. are going to come with self-sabotaging tendencies they're going to come in with that and they're going to come in at the beginning very gun ho they're going to come in at the beginning wanting to to create that transformation but you have to remember the reason that they're there is because there's something off and something broken in the world and a lot of times people that are, are have a lot that's off and a lot that's broken in their world you know they're searching for the answer outside of themselves and when you push the cause or the blame outside of yourself it's hard to surpass it right because now you're not in control of it so we as coaches get to really redirect that energy back and have them look introspectively to see what is there that we can work on we can support with so that they can push all the way through and you can't save anyone from their own apocalypse you just can't it's not possible i can give you 49 percent and 49% is everything I've got, right? I mean, Mimi, you've worked with me, you know, like I will give you everything that I've got, but you have to give me 51%. Mm -hmm. You have to want it more than me yeah, or yeah. else mm -hmm. it will not work no matter how much I give you. Yeah. That's really, yeah. really good. Yeah. I think that, you know, for speaking for myself as a consumer of courses, um, there's a relationship that I have to failure where uh, it's something that, you know, maybe my biggest fear ever is just failing, right? And so even in little micro failures, I will want to distance myself and disassociate from the thing that could potentially be a failure. And so if my life gets busy and I miss a couple of weeks of a particular course and there's some level of a timeline, it's my own like concern for failing that might even cause me to further distance myself, maybe even like subconsciously miss another week just so that I can start to say like, well, it's too freaking late anyway. It's sort of like I need to move on from this failure um, sooner rather than later. And so there's de that's definitely one aspect. There's also the aspect of just like I have a quick uh, pivot when it comes to things that I'm not resonating with. <laughs> I mean, we we'll watch a start a new series or something. And I'm like seven minutes in like, nope, I already know this is a no for me. Or yep. we'll be like, you know, three quarters of the way through a movie. And I'm like, I don't care about the end. I'm done. I'm over this. I'm ready to move on. So I know that about myself as well. And I would imagine you're just dealing with a just w wide variety of yeah. personality yes. types, psychologies, <laughs> traumas, triggers that are showing up. I would oh, yeah. imagine that it's like, you know, if you're not a therapist, you probably have have enough credentials to be by having worked with so many folks mm -hmm. and different psychologies on on what and why just try to figure out people are bailing out or, you know, continuing to join or whatever. There's probably yeah. just so much psychology into that. Well, what allows me to support, you know, really all the clients I've ever had since I've been coaching through that is again, the restaurant game. I mean, think about working in a restaurant, especially a busy one that's located in a tourist area. Yeah, You're mm -hmm. literally dealing, or dealing, I guess they keep dealing again. You're supporting, right? Or you're, um, you're, you're helping people have an experience from all over the world, people with different cultures. Some of them can't even speak English at the time. You have to navigate through a situation where there's a communication barrier, 
right? Talk about learning sensory acuity. Talk about mm -hmm. learning how to build rapport. Talk about learning how to micro, you know, not micromanage, but you know, just manage different things, multitask different things, right? Talk about learning sales. Talk about learning communication, right? Like all these different things that come up in a restaurant. I really think everyone should work in a restaurant for like just at least a year. Like you'll learn so many life skills there. It's insane, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. how much you'll learn in there. Yeah, absolutely. I was a... Uh... Hostess at the Pink Taco in college, so I, I, I did my regrets. I did my, regrets. I did my regrets. term. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's I, not too late. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> that might make good YouTube content. Yeah, right. <laughs> Chase undercover as a freaking restaurant, interviewing people, interviewing uh, guests at a restaurant. Yeah, maybe for the that. podcast. That's a good idea. Um, on the on the note still of of courses and and things, and just not the online world at large. I'm sure. In your dealings with all sorts of different people in this space, I'm sure you've encountered some folks who don't have authenticity, who don't have good mm -hmm. intentions, who just are, you know, raising red flags for you all over the place. Like, as we continue to navigate this internet world and online world, what are some red flags that you can share with us and our listeners about like people who might not be might not have your best interests at heart and the the sort of individuals who you mentioned promising unicorns and delivering donkeys like what yeah. are those red flags that we can we can look at I think that we have a sense that we don't tap into very often called our intuition mm -hmm. and I think that the more we connect with that intuition and really like listen to it and sit with it, we'll know. Like we'll know if someone is inauthentic or not, right? Just from kind of like that energetic standpoint. Now from a tactical standpoint, what have they built? Who have they helped? Ask for that, like ask for those results. Ask to speak to the people that they've worked with, right? In this space, there's so many people out there that are boasting all these different things, right? I'll teach you how to be an entrepreneur. I'll teach you how to make whatever in a month, right? Like, I'll teach you how to do all these things. It's like, okay, cool. But like, what have you built, right? Do you run a team? If so, how big is that team, right? You know, what is the name of your business? Can I go to a website? Can I see testimonials? Can I see a well-polished, you know, website with different things that I can interact with, with different products that you've built. Like really, you know, a lot of people get on sales calls and they, you know, for lack of a better word, like they're impulsive and they just make a decision without you know, like really looking into who this person is. And right. It's a big sales tactic to like get them to make that decision, you know, right away. And that's fine if it's something that you notice it's you know they're not making a decision because they're standing in their own way there's limiting beliefs are are blocking them from something that's really going to help their life and transform their life right but if you're someone who feels good about the the decision and 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 the journey that you're about to go on with this per person or this company do some research like do some research before the call do some mm -hmm. research after the call ask for them to you know, um, set you up with an email introduction with a past client. Yes. And I've had multiple clients do that. Like, I think Jason has talked to like eight people for me, right? And I was like, hey, just talk to Jason or, you know, talk to Mimi. Or it's like, I am not afraid for any of my, you know, potential clients to talk to any of my past clients. And that's like a good sign. It's like, feels good for me, right? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like that is a, like a really great trait to have in business where you can see like, yeah, go talk to anyone. Because yeah. you know the people that we've supported, whether they you know came out bangers with their launch initially or they didn't, they still we still fulfilled on the promise that 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 we had for them, right? Of building, launching, and scaling their business. That's such a great point, and the product speaks for itself, right? And in your case, it's the it's the you know the coaches and the um, students who go through these various courses and curriculums, and and even just speaking from my own life, my my father is a master carpenter, um, built multiple businesses in kind of the construction space, one of which was. Uh, high wealth custom homes and mm. that shit spoke for itself and yeah. it was word of mouth and if you came into this particular part of the world up in the northwest and you were someone of high wealth and you want a custom home you knew that you called my my father in his business mm. it's just the way that it worked and he survived the internet era with you know of course some baseline website dev and some you know photos but other than that it's word of mouth and uh, at the end of the day, like what is sustainable is still the product that you're putting out. It's got totally. to work. Like 
I'm, I'm not a marketer by any means. I've been at a host of different companies uh, that have had a huge emphasis on marketing, but, and they've all been in like, you know, supplement space or have a physical product space. Man, if the product doesn't work, you can't out market a bad product. It's tough. Yeah. And we've had many, you know, part of our process is our clients are left with all the assets that we build for them. Like, you know, just stored either in, you know, the Google Drive that we, um, create or we use a um, project management system called Monday and we store literally everything in there, all the assets and everything you need to relaunch. And we've had many clients that have relaunched on their own without us mm. that have done really well, um, you know, around the the same or a little bit less or sometimes more than, you know, what we've been able to support them with. And that is to me like the most gratifying thing about this process like that lights me up more than anything like not only are we helping you build launch and scale this thing but even when we're removed from the process you're still able to go out on your own and continue to build your business right it's like teaching someone how to fish like it's really really important um that that's part of it yeah, yeah and I, I love that you, you know, named your company Freedom Builders because that's what you're you're literally building for people is like freedom. Once they they get this down, they can create that freedom for themselves. Totally. Yeah, that was really important. Really important to me at the beginning. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, beautiful man. Really, really cool stuff. From um, you know, I'll speak from from the consumer perspective, um, but also from the brand perspective. When it comes to what types of marketing people are drawn to? Can we mm -hmm. talk about that? And whether this yeah. is something that the consumer consciously is aware of or unconsciously not aware of, I guess. So when it comes to marketing, for me, I think the best way to approach it is to put out an authentic message that resonates and meets people where they're at. So what a lot of times what happens with, you know, people that have gone through a personal development journey or people that are highly educated in the space is that they begin to speak from that level of awareness and they forget that the people that are now kind of like in that pain or in that challenge, they're at a totally different level of awareness, right? So if you want to reach the sick, you have to speak the language of the sick. But once we get healthy, we just start blurting out all this healthy language and people just yeah. don't understand it. It just goes right over their head, right? So I give an example example of like someone that's you know dying of thirst in the desert and they come across two buildings and the first building says we sell water if you're dying of sir of thirst come in and drink all the water you want so you feel better right like it's you know longer but it's very clear right like we sell water and it literally says if you're dying of thirst what's the story or the psychographic playing in their head right there I'm dying of thirst. Yeah. I need to find <laughs> something to help me yeah. from dying of th and then the second building basically says we help you rethink how you're experiencing your hydration situation come inside if you want to ride the h2o rodeo <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're yeah. both go they're both selling water yeah mm -hmm. right but the second building has made the message so cute that most people have no idea what they're talking about right mm -hmm. and the person that is in a state of pain is in a state of survival and what happens when you're in a state of survival this thing doesn't yeah. function as well yeah. as it can Right. Yeah. So you're just looking for something that you can understand very clearly so you can get out of that state of survival, out of that state of pain like this. Right. You don't have that higher level of thinking function to like discern this Rubik's Cube freaking cutesy message that's out there. You just don't. Right. So whenever we're supporting someone craft a message, we're making it very, very clear and we're making it very direct around the thing that the person wants. Right. Result driven. Right. They sell the destination, not the vehicle. Right. And there's three things people buy. Health, wealth, relationships. That's it. Everything can be broken down to that, in my opinion. I've been challenged on this many times, but health, wealth, and relationships, right? Everything else is a vehicle to get to one of those things. Like personal development, you know, it's a vehicle to get to one of those things. And the reason those things are so um, crucial is because those are the core motivating factors, mm -hmm. right? If someone tells you you're going to die, if you don't make a change, you're going to make a change, right? If you're alone, right? You have no intimacy or no partner partnership in your life, you're going to be kept up at night, right? You're going to be tossing and turning. And of course, if you can't pay your bills or you have no money, that again is very, very painful. So when you create a product that helps with one of those three, that product finds a lot of success because people have a lot of pain in those categories. Yeah. Yeah, that's such a good point. Health, wealth, relationships are yeah. like the the driving factors, not only in the online space, but just like 
in general, people yeah. people using that as gasoline in the tank and, and fuel uh, fuel to their fire of wanting to make a change. Yeah, that's that's so good. I feel like I feel like I've heard you say that before, but I can't remember. What are some fun trends or ideas that you see uh, available now or you know sometime in the near future? For brands, for content creators yeah. like ourselves and so many that you're in connection with. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, Yasmin is the authority on, you know, brand and, and social media related stuff. But uh, in the way of courses, I'll say the more you can gamify a course these days, the more intriguing and engaging that course mm. becomes. So we've actually gone with different courses um, that we're um, building out right now, we've actually like created little badges for like each level that the person reaches. So they like get a new badge or they just get a new experience. We've also created different colors and a different theme for each level of the course. So it's essentially like a video game. I don't know if it's like, remember like Zelda or something mm -hmm. <laughs> like back in the day, right? It's like every freaking level they like, did a wardrobe change and like got a new weapon and like all these different things. But what kept you very engaged in that game is because you wanted to acquire this new thing. Like you wanted to learn what was around the corner, right? Like, what am I going to be dressed as? What weapon am I going to have next? So it's the same thing with these courses. Like you can really take someone from, you know, then, you know, one step to the next step and you can do it in a really fun uh, and gamified way. And at the end, if they leave with a certification, which, by the way, it's the most lucrative model in the space is a certification model, right? So at the end, if they leave with a certification, now they can teach that same method to other people around the world. And again, they feel like they have been stamped by that like uh, um, authority or, or approval from from that coach. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a cool thing that that we're seeing um, come up and, and emerge, you know, more in courses um, and then there's fun fun things you can do with community as well folding in live events folding in in-person events you know folding in uh different virtual parties or dance parties things like that in your community where it doesn't have to be all business all the time like sure. you get mm -hmm. to have fun too right in the virtual space so i did that with naked confidence uh which was <laughs> my fitness course uh before freedom builders mm. but uh, in my community I um I did dance parties. It's like weekly dance party. And it's like, you know, there was 70 people that went through that course, like almost 100 people in that community. And they were mostly you know, ladies, like 95% of my clientele were women. And like, we would just sit there on Zoom and I would just blast some music and I had like some lights going and all this sh things. And <laughs> we were just like freaking raving on Zoom, but they loved it. It was yeah, a blast, yeah. right? Yeah. And it kept people wanting to come back for more and it made it fun. And it was different because not a lot of people were like doing that back then, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Uh, side note, I love that name, Naked Confidence. Yeah. Like, you rad. know, immediately. Like, it's a, it's a name that sells. That is absolutely like everyone knows. <laughs> that was the, that was one of the first, what well, was the first course that actually made money because I finally refined my message, which is why I'm such a believer in messaging. Before that, I was selling mindset in the fitness game. And I had this like cutesy line that said like changing the body is easy. Becoming the person who does the things to change the body. That's the tough part. Mm -hmm. And that's not fitness. That's identity. You have mm -hmm. to step into the person you want to become in order to lose the weight. And I was like screaming this from the rooftops and people are like, bro, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, bro. Like, what does that even mean? Yeah. So they were just buying courses from the people that said, hey, I'm just going to help you lose weight. Yeah. So that's what I changed my message to. I said, mm -hmm. does anyone want to lose 90 pounds in 30 days? I will help you lose 90 pounds in 30 days. And I literally went from freaking bashing my head against the wall to try to make a thousand bucks to a six figure product. Wow. Mm. Just by changing the message. Well, I, I, going back to what you said earlier, right? You're meeting people where they are yeah. at. And yep. if those folks are not past the physical prison that they are in with their own, you know, relationship to the mirror, they can't understand maybe even some of the personal development, mental, emotional, spiritual component to that manifestation physically uh selling to that version of themselves which hasn't been tapped yet may not may not be the even the most authentic way to offer them a solution because you do have to show up as the person who's like let's lose fat quick or whatever and we've definitely felt that you know in my in my time at organifi we've um at times just like had to find this happy medium of what we want to talk about mm -hmm. as as people who are 
at the cutting edge of health and we're down the deep rabbit hole of health, but the rest of the community is still at, how do I lose this stubborn belly fat? Boom. You nailed it, man. And that's this, that's why I'm, again, I'm such a firm believer in messaging is because I literally saw it play out in my own life and in my own world. And they're just not there yet. And the people that are at that higher level of awareness, a lot of times they just don't need your product or service. So they're not going to buy from you. So it's like, because they're already developed at that level of, of awareness. So when you speak to the people at, you know, where they're at, those are the people that are typically in the challenge, they're in the pain, and they need the result of, of your product. And by the way, I didn't change much in the course. Like that Naked Confidence course was primarily a mindset course. Mm. with some movements and some nutritional guidance, but it was primarily a mindset course. But I didn't market it that way. I marketed it as the thing that they actually wanted. And then when they came into the course experience, they were like, bro, I thought I was getting this, but you gave me so much more. Yeah. And then guess what they did? They started telling their friends about it. Dance parties and mindset that I've never been exposed to and my life is changing and I don't even know what this dude is doing. This is like, doesn't exist out there. You got to try it. Like, because now it was differentiated in the marketplace. Yeah, no, that's a really great point. And even in the Abundance Archetype course that I've been a part of for, you know, coming up in a year now with Jason and with the fact that it's called Abundance Archetype, you would expect like, awesome, Wall Street trader, we're going to learn all the secrets and we're going to be millionaires by the time we're done with this thing. And obviously I know Jason well enough to know that, you know, this is going to be much more upstream, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, this turned into the most, I just did a live with him about some of the feedback in the last year, but the course is incredible. The content's amazing. So much application, so much, you know, hands-on integrative, like really, really physical as much as it is digital. Yep. Um, but then there's this component of the community and it's twice yep. a week we're getting together. Some of them for just, you know, very open, candid, honest conversations of connection with other, you know, students. Um, and then other times it's like Jason's, we're doing like live podcasts, essentially. We're bringing on these really, really incredible guests, these these diamonds, these untapped gems in the world of wellness and vitality and wealth. And all of these things are upstream to making money, right? It's like, it's so beyond like just a transactional experience of, of you know, creating more abundance in your life. And so uh, to speaking to your point, like I think that was kind of the the door, right? The front of the house looked a particular way. But when you stepped in, it was so much more psychological and spiritual, yeah. emotional. Well, and I don't think he would mind me sharing this, but like Jason wanted to go full, just full spiritual course. Mm. And I, and I'm, you know, I'm a big part of the, you know, conceptualizing these courses and what they look like. Like when you hire on Freedom Builders, like we literally come in as an extension of your business and we mm -hmm. are where we are there with you literally every step of the way and you can bounce questions off me and I'm not just going to let you build something that's not going to find success, right? So at the beginning, I, you know, I share with him like, hey man, you are a former Wall Street trader who, you know, managed billion dollar portfolios and you just made a lot of money in your life. Like, you know, that is where you have authority. Like we want to position this thing where people get yeah. to learn that. They get to interact with the wealth part or the abundance part of this, like unlocking that abundance archetype. Like, you know what I mean? Like yep. we want to, to position it as that. And then also when they come in, they're going to get so much more because that's just who Jason is. Right. I mean, trying to refine all of Jason Picard's knowledge into no a course, like <laughs> it was an undertaking, yeah. but it turned out, it turned out beautiful, man. It's, it's a, beautiful. It, it's it's so... one of the most comprehensive courses I've ever, I've ever built. And that community is the best community that I've, that I've ever uh, interacted with. So he, he, he's crushed it. He's it's like great. production value is like surpassing all Netflix and Hulu <laughs> combined. Like it's really, really incredible. Well, well done. It's, it's, yeah, it's such an experience. And, um, for what is offered wildly affordable, I, I will be the telling that all the time bro. advocate, like, <laughs> advocate for that course. Um, we're having him on actually tomorrow to, to chat through it a third time. Cause I'm, I'm just such nice. an advocate for it. Um, you know, one more question for me, and that is, do you have this this really unique perspective in the sense that you are seeing what people are, are interested in, um, in a really unique way. And obviously you're talking, your backgrounds in coaching and, and health and wellness and there, God, there's a huge demand for that, right? There's, there's this alternative health space that is massive. Why? Because the mainstream health space is fucked. It's completely broken. And so what else, like that one's clear to me, right? 
what else are people asking for? What other systems are broken that people are looking for these alternative mechanisms for learning? And, and you know, f- maybe it's finances, right? Maybe the economy is, has pushed people into this domain of like, fuck it, I can't make money going following the script of life, savings account, checking, W-2, job, not working, still can't buy my house. What else is out there? What are you seeing from maybe like a, a, a interest from from the the students more so even than the teachers as far as what they're asking for? What is deficient in their life? Yep. It very much follows the three core motivating factors, health, wealth, and relationships. Mm. Medical system, financial system, and anything related to marriages, divorces, you know, anything that helps find the love of, you know, your, the love of your life. Like, How to manifest like, the man of my things. dreams. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. Dude, that would crush. But like, because that's what, <laughs> seriously, like that's what yeah. people are, are, are looking for, right? Again, people are looking outside of themselves. They're looking outside of themselves for what really they want is safety and significance, right? I want to feel safe and I want to feel significant, right? And they're looking outside of themselves or they're looking for a teacher or they're looking for a guru to do that for them. But really the best courses and really the way I navigate building courses is you're going to learn a process that's going to allow you to unlock what's already there. It's like an excavation process. I love there's that. nothing broken. There's nothing to fix. The it's like, you know, the sun doesn't go away just because there's clouds in front of it. The sun is always there. You just got to move the clouds out of the way. And these courses, what they allow you to do is they allow you to unlock this innate power that you already have inside of you. And when you build a course that allows someone to do that, you enter their model of reality. You don't try and force your model of reality onto them. You enter what's already there and you create change from within. Right. And you allow them to create change from within. Almost like they thought it was, you know, they make it think like it's it was their idea. Like, oh my gosh, I did it. I, I figured it out. Right. Like on their own. Right. It's kind of like a, a sneaky way of allowing them to create that change on their own. That's the type of change that sticks. Right. Not this, or else, you know, they're just going to look for something else. If they right. try and, you know, I need more money to feel this. No, that's not going to happen. Right. I need more sex to feel this. No, that's not going to happen. Right. Like you got to cultivate it from within. Um, but yeah, I mean, to answer your question, you know, specifically, it's those three things. Yeah. Those are the big three things that, that we're seeing. And then within those things, there's different niches and different things that emerge from there. Really cool. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. I can definitely feel that. Just I, I'm I'm sitting here trying to think of things that don't fall under that those three umbrellas, it's and I, I I can't. Yeah, totally. Well, I'm sure there are some people listening who are really intrigued and interested in freedom builders on the whole. And of course, we've shared a little bit here and there, but like, um, want to give you some space to just talk about freedom builders, and um, you know, if somebody is interested in they have this really baller idea and they don't know how to get it to people and, and actually like stand out. Um, what would you say to that person? Yeah. If again, I would say, you know, I would end the same way I started. Like, don't let that song die within you. Like do whatever it takes to get that song out to the world. Cause that's some of the biggest regrets that people have Mm -hmm. when they're you know on their deathbed or they're passing away it's like man i wish i would have followed my dreams more Mm -hmm. i wish i would have worked less or aligned with my passions more right because at the end of the day it's all about like being in alignment with your path your dharma you know like being Mm -hmm. in alignment with that right at the end of the day so um i would say that if you have an idea in your head And you want to get that idea out to the world, but you just don't know what that looks like, how to like conceptualize it from like the intangible to the tangible, then reach out to me. Like this is one of my favorite things to do is to get on a call with someone who has a really cool idea in their head and at least just give them some tips, some some value that they can use to get that idea out of their head and bring it into the world. And also, like, I'm a very honest dude. Like, I'll let you know, like, hey, that's going to work or it's not going to work, right? Mm -hmm. Or I'll allow you to leave with some strategies behind getting to where you want to go in a path from a messaging perspective that will work right so um again it's one of my like lights me up right it gives me energy to 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 do that um but yeah you know the the company as a whole uh, freedom builders we're done for you service so if you have that idea and you want to bring it to light we will i mean really do everything from conception to launch um and help you bring it to life. And that includes, you know, building out everything. I mean, even like what Jason did, we flew to him. We filmed that whole course with our crew, like all the things. 
uh, and then brought that to life. Uh, and then everything from a sales and marketing perspective too. So your landing pages, your funnels, we'll write all your emails for you. We'll help you with a social media campaign. We'll create all the yeah. content for that wow. social media campaign. We'll put the strategy in place for you. We'll help you launch it to the world. We'll help you track the launch and we'll help to tell you what you did good and what you could do next time to make more money and like all the different things. So all the data points and, and whatnot with that. Uh, and then from a, you know, delivery and fulfillment um, side, we'll put all your offer cards together. We'll put the digital products together. You know, we'll uh, make sure that all your thumbnails are in place. We'll design all your slides. We'll create your, I just like so much. We'll create your brand. We'll make your logo. And then you'll interact with me to really dial in your messaging and your market research and your psychographics at the beginning. So it's really building an online business for people that um, either are in the online space, but things are just, you know, not clicking and, you know, they're kind of spinning their tires in the mud and they're not generating the revenue they want. Or people that are not in the online space and want to go into the online space, they just don't know how, but they want to do it the right way right. out the gate. Mm -hmm. So they're not spending money making all these expensive mistakes. And I promise you, there are a lot of expensive mistakes in the online space. A lot. So, um, you know, that was, that's was that been our mission uh, from the beginning. Absolutely. You know, we've, yeah. we've, we've made a couple of those mistakes. Things cost a lot. And when you don't oh, know yeah. what you don't know, mm -hmm. somebody can really sell to you. Yeah. Um, and I will totally. say that even just, you know, I, I sat in on our, our discovery call with you and you like, you passed my bullshit meter for sure. And, and then just like executed and surpassed, you know, even expectations every step of the way with Mimi and Nathan in the course and, and even post launch, like so much accessibility, so much like you, almost as if there's this, like, as if you're a business partner, like you have equity in mm -hmm. the project itself, because you are so much involved in every step of the success. You and your team are very open to outside thoughts and opinions, whether that be directly from the creators or even if the creators use another resource for marketing expertise or consultation. There's there's just like it's so fucking good, man. Mm -hmm. And it's like yeah. really, really rare that there's something that is executing on this sort of like 360 degree point of of what you would need to have something be successful. And so huge shout out to you. Just a ton of love. And I really think that this is the start because it's it's uh this is where the world is going is like rolling up our sleeves, learning from people that we can trust in a way that is outside of the mainstream system that has left people sick, broke, and lonely, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for for that. And you know, that lights me up to hear that because that was that's been our mission from the start. Like we truly just want to see our clients win. And that's not bullshit that it comes from very authentic place. And you're mm -hmm. right. It is, it is like we have equity in the business, but we don't like, that's how I treat it. Like we are very much in partnership yeah. on this journey together. So yeah. Thank you, man, for that reflection. Yeah. 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 I mean, I can't remember. I mean, so many times I walked out of calls with you or your team and was telling Chase, like, I, I cannot believe everything that they're doing. Like, it's just a, it's, you know, been a 10 out of 10 experience. Like I, I, I had no idea it would be this deep. And it was something I was thinking of when you were describing um, Freedom Builders and, and your mission is like someone who, who just has an idea. They don't have a, they don't even have a name. They don't have a concept mm -hmm. really of like what their brand is or whatever. It's like you, the Freedom Builders team is through the brand, even the music, the intro, outro, the mm -hmm. the style, the font, the everything. It's like you're helping this person establish a frequency, like their own frequency yeah. in the online space. It's not just a course. Like that's the furthest thing from the truth. It's like you're helping this person create their stamp, their frequency of like, what are you taking into the world? What are you gifting the world? What are you you know, what, what's your passion and all of that? Like we all have our own signature frequency and, mm -hmm. um, that's really, um, I, what I feel from you guys is like every step of the way was, um, you know, guided and, and supported. And, and, uh, I just cannot say enough good things about your guys's team and the support and the professionalism, like, holy crap, 10 out of 10. Wow, thank you. Yeah, no, I've never heard it described. It's like getting emotional, man. I've never heard it Aww. described. Like that. That's so cool. <laughs> like frequency, yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that's the mission. Your song, you sing yeah. your song. Yeah, your frequency. there you go. Yeah. Right, exactly. Where can people find more about you and the Freedom Builders team if they are interested? Yeah, uh, freedombuilders.com or and builders is with a Z. Um, and uh, you can go to Mike G Coaching on Instagram and shoot me a message. Yeah, Just chat. Love awesome. it. Awesome. 
Thank you so much for for joining us today and, and sharing your wisdom with us and our listeners. I know that there's probably going to be some people knocking on your digital door after this. Wow. Thank you. I'm honored. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us and tuning in. Check the show notes for all the links that Mike mentioned. And uh, if something resonated with you here, maybe think about getting with the Freedom Builders team, jumping on a call to see if they can help you sing your song. We'll talk to you next time. Go spread some light. Okay, bye. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed that, check out right over here for some more fun clips. Oh, and you're going to want to subscribe. Bye.